Greetings everyone! Today we're delving into the world of language skills or also known as macro skills. We are familiar with listening, speaking, reading, and writing. But guess what's new on the block? It is called viewing. In a world full of visuals like images and videos, it is super important to know how to understand and analyze them. That's where viewing skills come into play. And today we will figure out why is this is a big deal and how it fits to our language abilities. Ever thought about reading a story without words? That's what we are tackling today. The magic of getting messages from images. It is like learning a new language, but instead of words, we're figuring out the language of pictures. And by the end of our time together, you will see how viewing brings a powerful boost to our language skills. Excited to uncover the importance of viewing? Let's jump in. Speaking and listening go hand in hand. Just like reading and writing, mastering these skills enhances communication and understanding. Now, let us focus on viewing, the often overlooked skill. It involves interpreting visual information such as images or videos and plays a crucial role in comprehending language, no one says, and cultural context. Viewing is the active process of observing and comprehending visual media encompassing a wide range of sources like advertisements, movies, television, pictures, diagrams, symbols, videos, visual plays, drawings, sculptures, paintings, and many more. In viewing, we engage in three simple processes, previewing, during viewing, and after viewing. These stages help us navigate and make the most of the visual information presented to us. The first process is called previewing. This involves your initial thoughts and predictions when first encountering the material. And it's about activating your schema or your prior knowledge and making quick associations. And the second process we have the during viewing. This phase emphasizes understanding and making connections with existing schema. And it provides an explanation to your previewing and helps you solidify your comprehension. And the last process of viewing is called after viewing. This follows the initial previewing and during the actual viewing, you threw a lot of questions based on your predictions. You also jot down notes during the viewing to enhance your understanding and gather more insights about a specific topic. And now that you have grasped the three steps, and their definitions, let's put the process of viewing into action by analyzing the painting that I am about to show you. Hello, me to offer you a brief introduction and information about this painting titled Saturn Devouring His Son. This is created by Francisco Goya between 1819 and 1823, executed as a mural painting transferred to canvas. It falls under the genre of mythological painting within the Romanticism movement, measuring 143.5 cm by 81.4 cm or 56.5 inches by 32 inches. This artwork invites your initial observation. After observing the painting and absorbing relevant information, take a moment to contemplate your initial impressions in the pre-viewing phase. During viewing, articulate your thoughts or inquire about any background knowledge. And once the timer ends, share your insights or questions and we will unravel your answers together. Your response is excellent. As I examined the three views of my friends shared about the painting, many were curious about Saturn devouring his son, questioning the reason behind it. And interestingly, there is no wrong interpretation. And now, I am eager to unveil the captivating story behind this artwork, shedding light on Francisco Goya's life. Francisco de Goya was an important Spanish painter and graphic artist of the Rococo and Romantic periods. 
He managed to capture the human soul in all its facets in his works. He was born in Fuente Todos, Spain, in 1746. He began training with a painter in Zaragoza at the age of 14, then worked in Madrid and became a court painter at the Spanish court. He later created religious frescoes, influenced altarpieces, and was recruited for the royal tapestry workshops. He had many children with his first wife, but only their son, Francisco Javier, reached adulthood. He is also rumored to have had relationships with his housekeeper and an affair with the Duchess Alba, whom he also portrayed. Goya died in exile in Bordeaux in 1828 at the age of 82, having spent the last years of his life deaf due to a stroke. His painting style went through various phases, from his early works in the Rococo style to his later darker paintings. His motifs are also diverse. Impressive portraits, socially critical works, depictions of war and violence, as well as nightmares and fantasies. The painting, The Naked Maja, is one of the masterpieces of art history. It was perceived as provocative, as the depiction of a naked woman was considered scandalous at the time. Interestingly, this painting also exists in a clothed version. The 3rd of May documents the brutal behavior of Napoleon's troops against rebellious Spaniards. In his famous series, The Black Paintings, he probably created 14 works that provide an insight into his disturbing visions and dark symbolism. His impressive life's work consists of over 500 paintings and a large number of prints and sketches. His art reflects a wide range of human experiences and social themes. Saturn devouring his son is a history painting that illustrates the myth of a Roman god Saturn, who haunted by a prophecy that he would be overthrown by one of his sons and ate each one of them moments after they were born. And in the end, his wife hid his sixth son, Jupiter, who duly overthrew Saturn just as the prophecy had predicted. And although allegedly inspired by the more conventional Saturn devouring his son, made in 1636 Prado, Madrid, by Peter Paul Rubens, who was born in 1577 to 1640, the cannibalistic ferocity with which Saturn is eating his child makes it horrifyingly unique. The painting masterfully portrays a frenzied psychopath in the throes of darkness, unable to restrain his homicidal tendencies. Saturn's wild nakedness, unkempt hair and beard, wide-eyed stare, and aggressive gestures all convey a state of historical madness. He has gruesomely devoured the child's head, right arm, and part of the left arm, preparing for another bite. The type grip on the lifeless body with blood seeping from his hands intensifies the horror. And additionally, there are hints that the original image included a partially erect phallus, adding an extra layer of unsettling detail. And if you are wondering why I used this painting as an example, it's because I've been obsessed with this for some quite time now. And from the first moment I laid eyes on it, the painting haunting portrayal of the Roman myth hooked me. The merciless lightning, coupled with Goya's war theme depictions, adds a layer of complexity that I find incredibly compelling. Examining this painting reveals a mesmerizing interaction between creation and destruction, the subdued fears of death, and the brutal reality of brutality. This masterwork explores the depths of the human mind. In conclusion, let its echoes remind us as we close to value the ways in art always illuminates our shared humanity. And that's all for today. Thank you for staying and listening with me throughout the whole lesson. Goodbye and see you to the next lesson. This is Zoe Enriquez reporting.